so in the previous two lectures basically we are discussing legendary equation so what is legendary equation legendary equation is uh, this particular equation with the which depends on this number pp plus 1 so we say such a equation legendary equation of order p and if we take p is equals to 2 we get this particular differential equation where we can see that we get this particular number 6 so depending on different different p we are getting this number change here in the differential equation and we get different differential equation so in general for general value of p we have solved this differential equation and uh, we got general solution of this differential equation which is a combination of two functions one is odd function other is even function and uh, this both function and y1 and y2 depending on different choices of p we are getting one of the function to be polynomial so if you take even values of p we are getting uh, so for p equals to 2 we get 2 degree polynomial p is equals to 4 we get fourth degree polynomial right so this polynomials corresponding to different value of p we are getting so so that means this differential equation uh, legendary equation of order p has a polynomial solution for different value of p and the polynomial solution which satisfies this special condition that p of pn of 1 is equals to 1 so uh, pn is a polynomial solution of the legendary equation for p is equals to n and that solution satisfies this additional condition then such a polynomial pn polynomial solution is known as legendary polynomial of degree n so that is nth degree polynomial and it is corresponding to the differential equation for p is equals to n and then we have uh, derived our one condition that uh, we, we will get the legendary polynomial which is exactly this polynomial okay so so that is what we have derived the the Roderick formula and uh, for different values of n we will get the uh, different polynomials so for example if we take n is equals to 1 then we get p1 of x from the rotorix formula we get 1 factorial 2 power 1 first derivative of x square minus 1 right so this is 2 power 1 is 2 that means half times we know the derivative of x square minus 1 is 2x so the first legendary polynomial is x similarly we can find p2x from the rotorix formula so that is 1 upon n factorial so that is 2 factorial n is 2 in this case 2 power n times second derivative of x square minus 1 square so now this is 1 by 8 times the second derivative so first derivative is 2 times x square minus 1 times 2x right so that 2 will cancel out uh, this 4 will cancel out with 8 and we get half so derivative of x cube minus x so this is nothing but half of 3x square minus 1 right so now we can see that we found the polynomial solution with respect to 2 of the legendary equation using this y1 function what is y1 y1 is the even solution this one so using this term 
we found Holomil solution of the Legendre equation for p is equals to two, right? And we got this polynomial, right? And this polynomial value of at x equals to one is minus two, right? So to convert this polynomial into Legendre polynomial, so that it takes value one at x equals to one, we need to divide by minus two, right? So that means it will be half. 3x square minus 1. That is the exactly term we are getting here. Half 3x square minus 1. Right. So we can further find the other polynomial also similarly using different values of n. Now the question is we have seen that in linear algebra if we have a uh, solution of uh, we have linearly independent vectors then we can find orthonormal vectors right so the question here is that whether the solution obtained of the legendary equation whether the solutions are orthogonal or not right so the solution of Legendary equation for uh, p is equals to n are the legendary polynomials if they satisfy p n of one is one. All right. So let us check whether these solutions are orthogonal or not. So this is regarding orthogonality of the legendary. Polynomials. <clears throat> so let us take two non negative integers m and n, right? And uh, these non negative integers are different. So m is not equals to n. So, what will be the corresponding legendary polynomials? Corresponding legendary polynomial to the number m is pm. So, let pmx and pnx be corresponding. Legendary polynomials. So PM is corresponding to M and PN is corresponding to N. So what does this mean? This means these two are the polynomial solutions of the legendary equation when P is equals to M and P is equals to N. So let, let us write down this condition. So that means both of these satisfies value of one at one, and they satisfy the differential equation, which is a legendary equation. So that means one minus x square pn double dash minus two x pn dash plus n n plus one pn is equals to zero. So this is same as this differential equation, just substituting y is equals to the polynomial and p is equals to n right so we got this legendary equation and the le legendary equation corresponding to other polynomial is 1 minus x square times pm double dash minus 2x pm dash so here the p is equals to m we are taking right so we got these two legendary equations and its solution is the legendary polynomial. So the same, these two equations we can write in a exact derivative form. So basically we, we can combine the first two terms and we get d by dx of 
these two terms, if we combine, it will be 1 minus x square en dash plus n n plus 1 times pn is 0. So this is first equation. The second differential equation, similarly, we can write in terms of pn. <clears throat> right and uh, what are pm and pn pm and pn are polynomials right so polynomials are continuous functions and we know that if we have two continuous functions then the inner product we can define from minus one to one fx gx dx right so because our solution is in this interval minus so x is between minus 1 to 1 so this with respect to this inner product we want to verify that pn and pm are orthogonal so let us do that so let us start with the right hand side term right hand side term is in terms of m m plus 1 pm so let us take the difference of n into n plus 1 minus m into m plus 1 times integral minus 1 to 1 the first polynomial in a product with the second polynomial right we need to show that this inner product is zero Right, this inner product is zero, but because our differential equation has this term, we are just multiplying it by this difference. Right, so now we can take this number inside integral. What shall we get? Is we get n n plus one times p n, and we know that n n plus one times p n is uh, this term. So this term will go on the other side, it will come with negative sign, right? So minus of d by dx of 1 minus x square p n dash, right? Times this function, p m of x. So that is the first term, this term. Now the second term is minus with minus sign so it will be plus d by dx of 1 minus x square pm dash so now we are using this equation so pm dash times the other polynomial so let us not write this x just write it as pm dash and pn dash right and we can separate the two terms uh, the integral we can separate so, yes so i have not understand after the equation to both as separate uh, just a minute the equation two yeah so let me repeat that so <clears throat> we want to show that Just a minute. So first we have written down the legendary equation corresponding to M and N, that is this uh, equations. Now what we want to show in this particular section is the so, the legendary polynomials with respect to m and with respect to n are orthogonal right so to show what are the polynomials polynomials are continuous functions so if you have two continuous functions you want to show they are orthogonal that means their inner product is zero right that is we want to show so what we want to show we want to show is two continuous function which are the legendary polynomials 
we want to show this inner product is zero right integral of uh, the inner product of pn with pm is zero we show the inner product of pn with pm is zero we need to find this particular integral right so if this integral is zero we will say that the inner product of pn and pm is zero so to find this integral we will use this equation first and second so in, in the equation first and second the pn and pm term comes with m m plus one and then n plus one so instead of finding this integral directly we are multiplying this integral with this particular term right because we want to use the legendary equation so now when we multiply this integral with this term the first term will be n n plus one times pnx into pmx so pmx is as it is n n plus one times pnx from equation one sir on next short right so that is this term yes so that is substituted in the first term and then similarly we have used the second term okay so second term is uh, this term times pn okay and then uh, okay so now we can use the integration by parts both the sides so if we uh, use integration by parts then we will get the first term which is integral of this term times pm right so that we get, we will write as pm times 1 minus x square pn dash and the limit is from x equals to minus 1 to 1. the second term of integration by part is plus integral minus 1 to 1 pmx 1 minus x square pn dash x dx all right so this is the integration by part we are using for the first integral similarly we will use the integration by so so we have basically integrated this term and differentiated this term here right similarly we will use the integration by parts for the second equation so the second integral will now become pnx 1 minus x square pm dash x the limit of this integral is x equals to minus 1 to 1 and uh, then we get the next term which is minus 1 to 1 pn dash x 1 minus x square times pm dash x dx so just verify that second term we are getting second term is these terms times pn so first we have integrated that term the derivative term so we got this term right and that times pn and that one and the other term okay so now we got these four terms so among we, these four terms we can easily see that when we substitute x equals to minus one and one this term will be zero so that means this whole term will be zero similarly this term will be zero because we have one minus x square which is zero for x equals to one and x equals to minus one so both these terms will be zero and the other two terms are with positive and negative sign so that will cancel out right because this term is pm dash 1 minus x square pn dash and this one is pm dash 1 minus x square times pn dash the so same term with the opposite sign so that will cancel out and other two terms are zero so finally we get this value to be zero so what we have verified is we have verified that this integral n n plus 1 minus m m plus 1 times integral is 0 and we know that m and n are different that means n n plus 1 is different from m m plus 1 right so this is a non-zero number 
non zero number we can cancel out from the both side so that will give us this integral to be zero right so let us write down that therefore the integral minus one to one pnx into pmx is equals to zero if m and n are different so this will give us that the the legendary polynomials for different n and m are orthogonal so therefore the inner product of pnx with pmx is zero if m and n are different numbers okay so this is regarding the orthogonal of the legendary polynomials. So uh, another related concept is orthonormality. So for orthonormality, we need to take inner product of the function with itself, right? And uh, yeah. So before that, let us uh, discuss one concept which is known as generating function so this equation is uh, uh, useful and it has some applications also so this equation says that this function if we expand in terms of legendary polynomials then we get this formula what are p and p and are the legendary polynomials so we shall not prove this formula we shall just assume it and uh, using this formula we will derive some nice properties of the legendary polynomials so let us uh, So use generating function formula and show that the legendary polynomial satisfies this equation n plus one times p n plus one x is equals to two n plus one times x p n x minus n pn minus 1 x <clears throat> right so using this formula can be using this generating function formula can we show this so this is a tricky question and uh, the method which we are going to use is we are going to differentiate the formula partially with respect to t so differentiate the formula partially with respect to t So if we differentiate the uh, this particular formula with respect to t both the side then we shall get minus half times 1 minus 2x t plus t square power minus 3 by 2 minus 2x plus 2t is equals to summation 1 to infinity n p n x t power n minus 1 so this is what we will get we differentiate partially with respect to t now this particular term we can separate in two parts because it is power minus 3 by 2 so we can write it as power minus half 
and power minus one. So we shall get one minus two x t minus t square power minus half one minus two x t minus t square power minus one plus t square. Uh, just a moment. Yes, you are right. So yeah. So here we have written plus t square, correct? So this should be plus t square x minus t. Right? So here we have cancel out minus 2. So minus 2 into minus half cancel out. And we got x minus t is equals to the right hand side will be summation n 1 to infinity n times n x into t power n minus 1. All right, just check that. Okay, so now what we know is we know that the term, this particular term is nothing but the generating function, right? Because that is 1 minus 2x t plus t square power minus half so that we can substitute here so we shall get x minus t times summation so x minus t times this function that is summation n is equals to 0 to infinity p n x t power n right and this term we will take on the other side so it will be with the positive sign Uh, power 1 and times this series n p n x t power n minus 1 1 to infinity okay so now from this this is a equation in terms of series so we can find out what is the recursion formula right and recursion formula uh, what we do usually for recursion formula, we compare both the side. So, yes. So, how did we write this in the summation form in the LHS summation n equal to zero to infinity p n x t k power n? Yeah, that is what I, I said. This we are using this equation again. Okay, so okay. Right. So that uh, this is exactly we substituted here. So this term, yeah. So this term is exactly this term. This term we have taken on the other side with x minus t. Okay. So we shall compare the coefficient of t power n both sides. So if we compare the coefficient of t power n both the sides, then this will be x times this term, right? So that will give us x p n x, right? The second term is t times this function. So that means we need to take n minus 1. So we'll get minus of p n minus 1 x, right? So that is the coefficient of t power n in the second term. Similarly, on the right hand side, the first term is 1 times t power n minus 1. So we need to substitute instead of n, n plus 1. In the second term, we have t. So t into t power n minus 1 is t power n. So that means we will substitute n there. So that will give us minus 2 n times x p n x. Right. So that is a coefficient of t power n in the second term and in last term we have t square into t power n minus 1 so that means that is t power n plus 1 so to get t power n we need to substitute n minus 1 in the last term so that will give us n minus 1 times p, min p n minus 1 times x 
so you can verify this later uh, so this term we'll get and then using this term we can write down n plus 1 in terms of the previous two terms pn term and pn minus 1 term so we get n plus 1 times pn plus 1 x that is this term that equals pn plus 1 times x pn x right so that is uh, combining these two terms and uh, so this term will go other side will become positive and the last term is minus n times e n minus 1 x so this is a kind of recursion formula for legendary polynomials where we can get the n plus 1th term using nth term and n minus 1th term right so <clears throat> let's see if we can yeah so this is not actually an ex example that is a uh, this is actually a, a result yeah so we have got this result now this result we can use here so this formula we can use and uh, if you know these two legendary polynomial we can find the next legendary polynomial so let us see if we can use this formula to find p3 so if you want to find p3x then we need to substitute n is equals to 2 right because p3 is should be pn plus 1 so if you substitute n is equals to 2 In the equation we get so this will divide uh, we take in the reciprocal so 1 by 3 times 2n plus 1 so if n is equal to 2 2n plus 1 is 5x p2x right because n is equals to 2 minus 2 times p n minus 1 n is 2 so it is p1x right so from the formula we got p3x to be this equation now we already know what is p2 and p1 we found in the this particular lecture All right so our p1x is x p2x is half 3x square minus 1 let us substitute p1 and p2 and find p3 using this equation so P2x is 3x square minus 1 divided by 2, right? That is this. And uh, P1x is x. So now if you simplify these, then we will get 5 by 2x power 3, right? That is the first term. Plus we get 1 by 3 common the remaining term is minus 1 times 5 by 2x minus 2x so we can further simplify this we will get 5 by 2 x power 3 minus 3 by 2 x so we found the third legendary polynomial using this recursion formula right so this recursion formula use two previous term to get the next term and you can also verify this using the Roderick formula by substituting n is equal to 3 in the Roderick formula you will get the same function okay so now uh, we have seen the orthogonality of the legendary functions. The next exercise, which we shall not do, that is show that the integral of minus 1 to 1 
dnx square dx is equals to 2 divided by 2n plus 1. So we have checked the orthogonality. Or for orthogonality, we proved that the inner product of pn with pm is 0. Right? So if you take m is equals to n, we get the inner product of pn with pn to be integral of pn square. Right, so that is the inner product of pn with pn, and that integral will turn out to be this for every non negative integer. So you can first check for n is equals to 0, 1, 2, but we want to prove this for general n. Okay, so now uh, this particular formula. We can assume for now and we can use a very nice application using the series expansion of a continuous function. Yeah, so using this particular properties. of legendary polynomials <clears throat> we can write a nice function fx uh, so function fx is defined on the So nice function means the function which are continuous or integrable on the interval minus 1 to 1. So we can write any function which is continuous defined on minus 1 to 1 as a series form e and pnx. So question is whether this is possible or not, right? So that depends on what function we are taking. If our function is nice function like a good continuous function or continuous function except one point where it can be non-continuous. So that kind of function, such a thing is possible. And if it is possible, what is a n? So first of all, let us assume that it is possible to write fx as a series expansion in terms of the legendary polynomials. So these are what? These are the legendary polynomials. So to find an We use the integral. So let us integral minus one to one pmx fx dx. So if our fx has this expansion, then what we shall get? We shall get fx equals to summation n is equals to zero to infinity a n pmx. Right, so just we are substituting this expression in place of fx function. Now, let us take the summation outside. So, what we shall get is we shall get ENR numbers, so, so that also we can take outside. So if we take summation as well as an outside, we get am into pn integration of that. And what are these functions? They are legendary polynomials. And we know that if m is not is equals to n, then the integral is zero. 
and if m is equals to n the integral is 2 divided by 2n plus 1 all right so using this orthogonality and this ex expression all the terms a n will be uh, for all n which are different from m the integral term will be zero except for the term when n is same as m so when n is same as m we get a m term integral minus one to one p m x m is equals to n so this will also be p m right all other terms in the summation will be zero because of the orthogonality of the Legendre polynomial. So now we know what is this integral. This is integral of pm square, and that is nothing but two divided by two m plus one. Right. So now we got the expression of am. Am is nothing but this integral divided by this number. Let us write down what is AM here. So we got AM to be 2M plus 1 divided by 2 integral EMX FX TX. So what did we prove here? We showed that if we have a nice function FX defined on close interval minus 1 to 1 which can be written as a series expansion of Legendre polynomial, then the coefficient of the series are nothing but these numbers. Right, so this is two for all m greater than equals to zero. So let us take one example where we will take some simple function and uh, whether we can find some Initial numbers a0, a1, a2, so on. So consider the function. So such a series expansion we will also study in this course that is known as Fourier series expansion, where we will see the expansion in terms of cosine and sine term. But this is a general expansion in terms of the Legendre polynomials. It is known as general Fourier series expansion. So consider the function fx is equals to one when x is between zero and one and it is minus one less than x less than zero. The value of the function to be zero. Right, so at zero we have not defined, but any particular value will not change the integral, right? So we can define any value and we get the expansion. So the question here is the nth find the nth legendary. coefficient in the expansion so what we mean basically we want to find the nth term here right so uh, yeah find the first few terms basically First few nth legendary coefficient of the expansion. So let us try, start with the general term. So what is the general term? General term is a n to be 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 integral minus 1 to 1 f x times p n x p x. Right. So that is exactly this term for n we are writing. And uh, we want to find first few ANs. 
because we know first few Legendre polynomials. Well. We know Legendre polynomial well when n is equals to zero, n is equals to one, n is equals to two, n is equals to four. Right. So let us find the corresponding first few terms. So here, what is uh, a zero? A zero is n is equals to zero. It will become half integral minus one to one fx times p zero x. So p zero x is one only. So that you can verify from the products formula. So this is nothing but integral minus one to one of this function. But this function is zero over this interval. So we'll integrate over 0 to 1 value of the function is 1 right and uh, if we integrate this we get integral to be x limit is 0 to 1 so the value of this integral is half right similarly we can find a1 which is n is equals to 1 it will be 3 by 2 integral minus 1 to 1 again here also since the Function is zero over the minus one to zero interval. The in integration will be this one only, and uh, the value of the function is one. So we get p one of x dx, right? That is three by two integral p one. We know first Legendre polynomial is x, so this will be nothing but three by two. times half right because integral is x square by 2 limit is 0 to 1 so that is finally we get 3 by 4 so what will be a2 a2 will be 5 by 2 times integral 0 to 1 p2x so that is 5 by 2 times integral 0 to 1 Second Legendre polynomial is half 3x square minus 1, right? And uh, if you integrate this, we get 5 by 4 times x cube minus 3, x cube minus x, limit is 0 to 1, the value will be 0, right? And the last coefficient corresponding to Third legend of polynomial is say 1 by 2 integral 0 to 1 half of 5x cube minus 3x right so that is 3 by 4 times 5x power 4 by 4 minus 3x square by 2 limit is x 0 to 1 and uh, that turns out to be say 1 by 4 into 5 minus 6 by 4 so that will be minus say 1 by 16 all right so we found first few terms of this legendary expansion therefore for this given function x the corresponding legendary series will be first coefficient that is a0 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 is half right so half times p0 p0x plus a1 we found that is 3 by 4 p1 of x a2 we found is 0 so the p2 term will not be there and uh, a3 we found is a1 by 16 p3x and so on all right and interval is minus 1 less than x less than 1 okay so uh, i think this should be enough for today lecture so if you